Hello everyone. Today I am going to show you how and which of the large language text generation models we can run in our local system. But before that, we need to understand few basic things. So as we all know that hugging face is the repository for most of the large language models. So you can find different models in this um, website. And when you go into huggingface.co, you can uh, of course see this model tab over here. You click on it and a lot of details about different models are presented. So over here you have different categories of the model. Today we are going to talk about only text generation model. So we'll click over here and only the text generation models are presented. Now out of these models, not all of it uh, can be executed on any of these uh, local systems. So how we can know that which one to you know, download or try to run in our system. So before that, we need to understand that what is this 3.5 or 7 billion or 34 billion. So these large language models are basically trained in a neural network and each of these uh, well you may know it as 7 billion parameters are used to train these models or there is another way of saying it which is these 7 billion is the weight of the model. So if you and each of these you know when you know, when you think of a neural network there are multiple nodes in it and these 7 billion nodes are basically there which are to train and each of these node is of 32 bits so 7 cross 32 divided by 8 considering 8 bit 8 bit is one byte divided by 8 will give us basically the virtual ram required to execute this model so if there is a 34 billion or a 70 billion kind of models so you can easily calculate what is the ram requirement so when we uh, do a 7 billion into 32 divided by 8 it will give us around 28 gb of virtual ram requirement which is pretty big and most of our local systems does not have 28 GB of RAM or anything. So there is another concept which is quantization. So in this repository in Go Hugging Face, there are quantized model available for multiple of these large language models, be it Llama or Minstrel and etc. So we have to look out for one such model so in the first page i don't see any of such model okay wait there is a, a gguf model which is 7 billion and gguf so this gguf basically tells us this is a quantized model now what is gguf so if you go for a google search then you can see that Although there are two basically ways to quantize a model. One is GPTQ, another is GGUF. While GGUF is previously known as GGML. And as you can see that GGML or GGUF now is a quantization method that allows user to use CPU to run the LLM, but also offload some of its layer to the GPU for speed up. So basically in today's machines that we use, there can be some integrated GPUs inside our, um, I mean, the core. So um, it can be as minimum as 2 GB of um, GPU. So these GGUF models, quantized models can of the large language models can be executed in our systems. And what is, and, and and how can we know that which of this 70 billion uh, quantized model or a uh, 70 billion <coughs> oh, sorry a 7 billion or a 70 billion quantized model will work so basically the calculation remains same so instead of 32 
uh, which we which we were multiplying with seven, it will be a four. So instead of having each node of thirty two bits, we are having it as four bit. So this way we do compromise a bit on the um, on the authenticity or you know performance of the model but it is negligible so when you open one of these files you click on it and then you can see that there is files and versions over here if you go you see there are multiple quantized versions available and each of these are around 4 GB 5 GB so these models can be easily executed in our local machines and today in, a, in my previous video I have used uh, compared three of such quantized models uh, Llama, Minstrel and another one so you can refer to that video and see the performance but over here we will just um, say take one of these models and see the performance and whether it can do the prompt that we provided okay apart from this we need to learn about one more thing that to execute all of these models we would need uh, a, a, a library a python library basically uh, which is c transformer c transformer um, helps us run most of the models and it supports you know uh, gpt falcon llama minstrel and all of it so most of the models are supported not all so you can you know always come back and they keep this list updated so right now these are the models and these are the model types which are supported by c transformer so now if we go to our code it's a very simple code of few lines so we have to first import these langchain libraries langchain is a framework as we know uh, which helps in executing the models very easily and uh, you know do a lot of methods and operations with these models so when we do these imports after we do these imports we say suppose we are choosing this particular model uh, to work with so where did i get this name so if you go to the websites um, this is the model id okay so we will use this uh, in our code so this is the model id then we have to define a variable os.environment xdg cache home and define a path within it why do we do this because the next step is to of course download the model locally and then execute it so when we if we don't do this don't um, you know initialize this environment variable then the model will be downloaded in a cache path um, somewhere in your system but if you want it to be in a particular path so that you are aware of it and you can delete or operate on it uh, whatever you feel like then you need to define so even if you don't define it it's okay the model will be downloaded and the program will work accordingly no issue with that but if you define it you can you know direct have control on the downloading file so that's it um, initialize the environment variable then we are saying some conf setting some configuration uh, parameters like temperature of the model to be zero and the context length to be 4000 now we are making use of the c transformer library where we are saying the model id is this one model type so how do i get the model type if we go back to the website then you see in the model sorry model files and versions there is always a file called config.json where you will find the model type to be mentioned so when you are selecting a particular model you need to select the corresponding model type also from this file and put it over here and then we are initializing the or making use of the config parameters that we have defined in the previous line 
and then the callback is to make use of the streaming streaming functionality so that the output of the model is, is, is shown in a streaming fashion. Now what we are asking the model to do. So here is the prompt. Write a function to accept a data frame and a column and return a data frame with all the null values converted to zero in the column. So basically I am saying that it will accept some data frame and also a column name. So whichever column name is provided in that column name whichever field whichever values are null they will be converted to zero similar kind of requirement can be um, there in any of the projects that you might be working on so instead of doing it on your own uh, writing the program from scratch we can make use of the large language model to write it for us so this is an easy example though but let's start with this now I'll go to my terminal and execute the file. As soon as I do this, you will see the file starts, uh, the model file starts downloading. But in my case, it is already downloaded. You can see that in a particular path, I mean the path which I have defined model and cache these model are downloaded and you know put in so it won't take that long and uh, after but when you are running it for the first time it will take some time to download the model and put it in this location but immediately after that it starts responding so let's see what is the output Okay, so the response is complete. So we can see that it has created a data frame and then it is calling the column to be A, which it is passing. Basically, in the print section, it is calling replace null, this function or method that it has created, passing the data frame, which is this one, and column, which is A. And then within the method, it is just converting the nulls into fill any by zero in place true and it is returning the data frame which is in turn <coughs> sorry uh, which is in turn printed so we can see that uh, the model is giving us a proper output and yeah this is how we can run a large language model locally on our machines with maybe 16 GB of RAM or 8 GB of RAM because the size of the model file is 4 or 5 GB we can even try it out you know on a 8 GB RAM system the performance may differ a bit but uh, yeah it will be possible to execute such models in our system too and get an idea how it will be working of course we can now play with the temperature increase it and see up to, up to one increase it by um, maybe 0.1 and see the difference in the outputs and play around with it and always expect a different perf a different result when you change from 7 billion to 13 billion or 70 billion models yeah so that's a short demo of how we can execute these models and what are the things you need to know the basics uh, to execute such a model on your local system thank you and if you like this video share with your friends and subscribe to the channel for more such videos